Is that what you're doing, Ralph here, Ralph Customs? Look, I've got a bit of block of alley in my hands. <clears throat> I'm uh, doing, I'm making a uh, cheap man's DRO for the Atlas Lathe. So a digital readout for the Atlas Lathe. I've made this in parts, this video, so it's going to be even more fragmented than normal. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and you'll understand it once it gets going. So let's do it. the atlas bless it i've just fitted this last few days transformed the parting off it's now there's not a parting off tool in there like i'm trying to show you it but anyway really good really good bit of kit um maybe could do with the next size up i think that the size of this lathe is right on the cusp but i chose that one uh, i've still got a little lifter block under there that i had on my previous tool holder but really good anyway what we're looking to do today is using one of these cheap, the solder's carbon, but they're not, the plastic, so they're not really good for measuring anything. The auto one as well, which threw me a bit, and they've only got one decimal place in the readout. But, still better than nothing. You know, for the, the dish, you've got nothing. You could fit a uh, DTI gauge in this. I've made a little adapter for that hold on where are we oh, here we go so i can now fit that look little stainless jobby and that sits there wherever i like it so i've got this action look i can use that but it's very limited in travel you know it's got uh two inches oh it's quite a lot actually not to five mil. Don't know. It's got anyway. Not enough trouble for daily. Not for big cuts and stuff. So we're going to adapt one of these. We're going to fit it on here somehow. Yeah. We're going to fit this end to there to the saddle, and we're going to use an alley block to fit the main body to the keyway. So let's see how we do that. I've spared you me leveling that up, blocking that out. Look, we trued that, we've skimmed it all over. You can see me uh, climb milling. Check out Joe Pie, I'll put a link in. I'm sorry, Joe, I don't think you'll ever see this, but I can't pronounce your last name without looking it up. But Joe Pie, he showed a lovely climb milling technique for no burr when you're facing off, and that's what I use. So you end up with a bit of a maze, you end up with a spiral, look. Anyway, I've digressed. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna sit that on there. We're going to machine it, we're going to cut it out so it drops down on the keyway and we're going to angle the top so it sits on the cock, yeah? Then, we've got a modified, look, we've trimmed all the fat off, trimmed the spike off the end, none of that jiggery pokery going on. We're going to effectively mount that somewhere like that, we're going to fix this end on there we'll make another alley block the bolts on there this is for when you screw thread cutting it's an indexer i can't screw thread because i've not got the change gears uh, i've only got them the ones that i can make work for general feed i can't screw cut but anyway we're going to machine that up first thing we're going to do we're going to cut that slot out um and what i'll do i'll do my poor man's blackout poor man's blue where, where is it here look i'll use this my poor man's engineer's blue and we'll uh mark that we'll black that off all the way across and then we'll flip it over and we'll scribe the keyway and then take it over to the milling machine yeah as you can see still got a bit of swarf on there bad practice outfit the 
where I've sat this in the lathe was actually brushed clean. But there's my transfer marks. That's as wide as the keyway is. As the, the way on the lathe. And that's as thick as it is, three eighths. So we're going to cut a slot out that is just bigger than those lines. I'll rough it out first with this 12 mil four flute uh, and then give it a quick skim round just to clean it up. Yeah, I might video a bit of it and fast forward through it because nobody needs to see that, do they? But here we go. So off we go, roughing out. There are a couple of roughing out passes, taking quite a big chunk. Now, first one's a bit screechy, actually. It's a, a bit much for it, but we, we manage, you know, we get there. Sucking away with the old vacuum is woefully inefficient, but we managed to clean it out later. And uh, now we're off third pass, a nice light cut to take it out to size. So we've machined that, as you saw, and we've cleared clean the hoover out, look, the old extraction system. Now, I've got one more operation to do with it while it's mounted. I'm not going to take it out. I could, it's not a crucial thing, but in order to fix it to the way, I'm going to use these rare earth magnets. Now, th these things, they're, they're more trouble than flubber. They're hard to measure and move and mess around with because they stick to everything. Um, really strong. And they are 12 mil by 1 mil. So I think a few of those dotted along there should hold that just where we need it. Yeah. I've set me uh, tool to touch on and we're going to take a 40 thou plunge or a 1 millimeter plunge. Just randomly. It doesn't have to be exact. We'll just smack it up as we go along and get those magnets in there. So off we go, plunging away with that cutter down to one millimetre. What I didn't realise was, you could just see it on the first cut that I made, was that I wasn't using a proper end mill. I was using a slot mill, four flute slotter. So we've changed it over, we've got a nice plunge cut going, and uh, we'll get those out ready to take the old flubber magnets. Right, so that's done. Yeah, that's ready to take its evil magnets. I've, that one that I showed you is singular. I've, I've put it to, I'm going to rip that back to now. I'm going to uh, leave it there, look. I'll put it to join its friends. And uh, there's the pocket. So I think six of them will uh, make that feel like it's bolted down. What I want to do. Look, this, I've tried this on, it fits. It's a little bit of play, but that's good. Nothing wrong with that. We want it to slide. So if we do bump it with the carriage, it'll move. There's no accidents there. And we've, we've not got it fixed. We can take it off, we can put it on, we can slide it where we want it. What I would like is for this to present itself slightly on an angle. Just slightly on an angle, look. So I'm going to guesstimate, turn that off. It's this, um, I'm going to guesstimate an angle and we're going to take a cut from about there across the top of the block. So I'll mark it up or I'll clamp it in place. I'll, I'll work out some way of doing it and we'll get cutting. So off we go. We all suction working properly. Just got that on the angle where we want it, clumps up nice and tight, and milling it down to give us that surface on the slope there, like we like we wanted. Oh, that went well. So we've got that slope. Where is it? Hold on. Bear with. Uh, there. So we've got that slope. We can mount that on. I need to look at how we're going to fix that, and then we'll make a bracket that catches that, and we'll set those magnets in to the uh, recesses Jesus work man it's dangerous things anyway we'll set those in uh, in a bit of epoxy leave it overnight and then come back to it so we get some epoxy mixed up Devcon 15 we we'll have to warm it up a bit in this cold weather but we'll get it well mixed we get a little bit into those holes and then we'll press the flubber magnets once we've uh, finished putting up the right battle with me we'll get them pressed into place 
and then we can go from there. So we uh, try not to make too much of a mess, but I'm sure we'll cope. And we'll just wrestle with these magnets, like I said. They're the devil's work, they are, but we managed to get them all in. And we'll put a thick plastic bag, a jiffy bag over with some clamps. So, that's dried now. Get these clips off. Hopefully, peel these bags off without magnets coming off of them. So, yay. A little bit of residue there, but we'll give that a scrape off. And uh, that's ready to mount the slider on. The um, in, I'm going to do that with the same stuff, I think. Oh, excuse me. I looked at putting screws through the back or something, but it's so flimsy. And I'm not sure how I'd do it, so I vote for epoxy that on there. We'll go with that, I think. I'll get that on, off camera, obviously, you've seen it done with the magnets. Same situation with this, with some gentler clamps, and uh, we'll rejoin it when it's all one piece. Super. Now then, good morning, it's the next day. Um, you won't know that, because it'll just follow on for the last clip. We've done it, we've attached. Look, we use the epoxy, a little bit over overspill, but it's all right. And that, does its job really nicely swap hands so look ooh, ooh. the only the only thing i'm not happy about is these cheap ass plastic verniers they're only one decimal point but you know i'm not making spaceships anyway what we're going to do now is join this end to the carriage somehow so when we move the carriage we move the scale and what i was thinking was I've got this bit, a billet, if I can drill a hole to bolt through there and then maybe magnets again onto the scale or glue this to the scale and magnet onto this, I don't know, I'll work something out, so let's get on. Right, so what I've done, I measured this bolt and it's metric, it's not metric, it's 5 sixteenths. I reckon. So it's just of a, it's nearly eight mil, yeah. And I've given myself a bit of clearance. I've gone for seven mil, and I've marked that as a centre in the corner of the block. So I've marked that as a, a corner. Well, and then I use my uh, automatic centre punch, which is a new acquisition. And I can't show you how to, I did it on camera, but you know how they fucking work. Press it, it goes click. Job done. Um, now, the eagle-eyed among you will notice that we have shifted from the redneck marker pen and we have actually got some Dichem red. I've treated myself. There you go. Anyway, so what I'll do, uh, obviously that bolt will then go through there. We'll go that way. Through the block. We'll try it on the lathe and then we'll use the Dichem this side and we can scribe across the top of that scale to give us a reference point. So... We'll go and drill that through, and we'll go from there. Right, so we've laid that in place. Look, just put the bolt through to line it up, and now we can mark round the uh, end of the vernier there, the scale with the scribe and the die cam, and we can do the same with the way cleaner on the end of the carriage there. A bit out of focus and do it one-handed, but I'm sure you get the drift. So, oh, look at that, look. Come back, come back, the old permanent marker. All is forgiven. No, seriously, the red stuff's good. You just need to let it dry. It's quite cold and damp in the workshop, so lesson learnt. But we're going to chop that round the lines. We're going to radius that end round the hole. We're going to do a relief there, although future me, as Blondie Hex would say, now realises that if I just spaced it off the carriage... I wouldn't need to do anything for the way cleaner, but here I go machining it out, look. Notice how well the suction method's working. Notice how well the cutter's working. I'm going to have to switch to double-handed action shortly because we need to cut on the angle and we don't have uh, such functions on my manual little mill. So 
So we now we've got it flipped over and we're doing the one that I actually need to do for the scale there. Again, it's got a bit of a uh, angle of the dangle. It's not exactly a square cut. So we end up doing a little bit of two-handed, um, trying to do a manual diagonal on a bench top mill. It's not ideal. And to be fair, I'm not that happy with the finish, which we'll see in a minute. But we'll get a workaround, you know. It's all a learning curve. So, this is proving the hardest bit of the old, okay, get in focus, the old uh, project. We've tried it on, and we've got clearance issues, and we've got depth issues, and I've trimmed this off a little bit, but I'm going to have to do that file it or sand it or something. I can't get the shapes that I need there in the milling machine, which is all right. But I need more depth, so I'm going to have to increase this a little bit, and I'll probably take all of that out. Um... Again, which is fine. So I'm going to give it a quick remachine, and I'll spare you watching me do that. And then we'll catch up when I have. Yeah? No worries. So there we have it. Look, we broke through to the other side, like Jim Morrison. And we've got the two shapes that fit nicely. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dress this up a little bit. I'm going to clean it all up off camera. Yeah? Um... I'm going to radius this as well on camera. I saw a video of someone doing this, genius, and I'm going to take the top off just to match the other the other part of it. Yeah, if you recall, it's got a slope on here. So I'm going to do that all off camera. So a little bit of cleaning up. Uh, we'll do the chamfer this edge, a big top off, and I'll do this on camera because it is the neatest trick, and if I pull it off, I'll feel so clever. I'll be so happy with myself. So let's try and do that. Okay, so we're all fettled and cleaned, and now we're on to the exciting bit for me. There's a channel on there, Build Something Cool, and he's a great guy, uh, and he did a, a video about cutting radii without setting up a, an indexing table. Well, I've not got an indexing table. So what he said was, if you pick your pivot point and use that to rotate your part around, you can cut facets that will give you a, a good enough radius. So you just need to set your height to your square edge. So you level this up with your tool. You can touch on to do that without the machine running. Lock everything off. Uh, and then back off your tool a little bit. Give yourself a bit on the quill or the drop the knee, depending on how your machine works. And then you go for a cut. And then you rotate your part. You go for another cut. And then you rotate your part, and you go for another cut, and another cut, and another cut, and another cut, and another cut, until you've got as far around as you can go. Then you can flip it around and come from this side and do it all again. Yeah? If you find yourself with a point when you're finished, what you can do, because you, you've not got the clearance, you can't turn this enough. So you, you've always got a pointy bit sticking up, and you can't catch it. So what he said you can do, and it makes sense, is flip this around, yeah, and put your pin in over the edge of the vise. And again, pick a facet this side now to level your tool up with, set your quill, and rotate it this way, and go again. And that, my friends, is what I'm just going to do. So off we go. Trim, turn. Trim, turn, trim, turn. So we work all the way around that. It's like wash, rinse, repeat. And what that will do is form us that nice little radius a lot easier than trying to chop it out by hand or doing it on the grinder or the belt sander or whatever. Now we'll just give it a quick clean up with, clean up with the emery. That's not working. Emery's not working. Get it on the DA, look. 100 grit DA sorted. Whew! That was a lot easier. So we've got that a really good clean up. I'm not really good. I'm not polished it. I've just buffed it over. Got all the rags off. Done the edges. Give it a trim here. You know, just made it pretty. Got a bit of glue on it from where I've glued this in. So that's glued in just like the others. Those evil flubber magnets. And its counterpart is on the end of the scale. So those two go together like a rama lama 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 long a ding dong even so we'll get that on and have a look see how it works eh? 
So there you have it, look. I've cleaned that all up and done what I've done, and it's all together and in one piece. And the flubber magnets are doing the thing, so when we wind the carriage, it shows up on the scale. We can touch on a workpiece, zero it off, and then make a cut to the depth that we want. And we can keep repeating that. We've got the uh, carriage stop that I made in one of my other videos, and that I'll also take the DRO, as I've shown. So we can go at it from both ways, which is always good. The beauty of it is, for me, not only if you, if you crash into it, if you back up too much and crash into it, it slides, there's no damage there. But when you finish with it, you can just pick it up and put it away if you want to, you know. It doesn't have to live on there, but it can. You can have it with or without. And when you're ready to go again, just stick it on, put it in place, zero it when you need to, and it'll be measuring away. Job's a good one. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I've inspired you. I hope I've taught you things, even if it's not how to do stuff. Hey, you never know. And we'll talk again soon. Big love, everyone. See you later.